York People First and the University of York are working together on a project about parents with learning difficulties and their communities. This short film tells the story of the development of the Parents and Their Communities project, how we're going to do the project, and how we're adjusting to life under oh, lockdown. Hello. Hello. What is York People First? York People First is a self-advocacy group run by and for people with learning difficulties. And we are doing a research project with York University on parents with learning difficulties. What is self-advocacy? Self-advocacy means to me to go to go to meet up with people and to comp compare campaign for people's issues and speak up for people if people have problems. If we don't speak up, nobody else won't do it in this city. People won't listen. Mm. It's for people who are speak, speaking up for their own lives and speaking up for, for people with learning difficulties and to make the council listen to people in politics and, yeah. York People First have campaigned for better support for parents with learning difficulties for many years. A big part of self-advocacy is about sharing experiences to create change. Claire shares her experiences of becoming a parent. This film is about my experiences of what it was like for me being pregnant. I first discovered I had a learning difficulty when I left secondary school and I got given my school report and it said I lack self-confidence. So I decided to go to Welburn Hall School and learn about living independently. But one thing I didn't learn about was relationships and families because it was never expected that I would have a relationship of my own. When people found out I was pregnant they were not very happy. They thought I wasn't going to be a good mum. They were always talking to each other. They were never talked to me about my pregnancy. I was told to keep it quiet and then I thought right I've got I thought what am I going to do? No, it was never an option for me to keep my child because all the staff were talking to each other. I wasn't allowed to make any decisions of my own. I didn't have any antenatal classes, so I had to, you know, they were just talking instead of supporting me through my pregnancy. It was a very stressful time for me. I was in and out of hospital, was very angry and upset for nine months, and I would not wish it upon anybody else, for it to happen to anybody else, but I would like to see antenatal classes being given to people with learning difficulties in the future. Learning from the experiences of Claire and other parents, we wanted to start a conversation about how parents with learning difficulties can be better supported. So we organised a conference in May 2018. Today we're holding a, a conference and it's about parents with learning difficulties. People with learning difficulties are losing their children and there is no reason why that should happen. If they're given the right support, the right training, they can be as good a mum as anybody. We learned a lot at our conference. It was very good to get all them people there and it's made a big difference. That was great. We had our local MP to help us launch it and uh, open it with me, who was being chair of your people first. And it was great to see everybody from social workers to find a gap. People learn differently and professionals were mixed in. So basically, we know that um, the research says that parents, um, learning disabled parents are more likely to have um, social care intervention into their lives and more likely to have children um, removed. We understand that community resources can be important supports for parents. We want to find out what community resources are available and how accessible these resources are for parents with learning difficulties. 
So what we want to do is talk with parents with learning difficulties in York and with people who work with parents with learning difficulties as well. And what we want to do is find out about all the supportive things that parents find in their communities to help them with being a parent. So we're going to talk with lots of different people. We're going to do interviews with parents and with professionals. And one exciting thing we're going to do as well is we're going to do some community mapping. So that means that we're going to get a big map of York and the surrounding area and we're going to ask people where they go and the people they see and the things they do to really help them to be parents. And then we're help hoping to produce that map so that everybody else can see all the really good things there are going on in York that can help parents, but also figure out as well what things we still need to help parents with learning difficulties be the best parents that they can be. Our project is all about our communities, but everything has changed in the last few months. We've been talking together about what life is like in lockdown. Becca said, It's not seeing your family and friends. Mm. It's hard, isn't it? Yeah, just watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> when thinking about his lockdown experiences, Michael wrote, I feel like we've gone back in time with this lockdown. For me, it feels like we've gone back to what it was like before York people first started and before I started working. Andy said, yeah, yeah, it's been difficult, but it's been really good having these meetings and talking to my friends on video. It's been really good, who I haven't talked for a long time. It's really good to talk to them. And I feel, I feel good now. I'm just, you just have to get on with it, don't you? Staying connected has been really important in these times and we keep in touch in lots of different ways. Some of us use group videos, some of us use WhatsApp and some of us use Twitter. But what comes next for us and the project in these times? Andy and Katie reflect on the challenges for the project. So when we get people to interview, that's going to be the hardest job to get people lined to interview them, isn't it? The situation is clearly going to massively affect how the project's done yeah. and the resources that are available in the community that probably have changed since the project was conceived uh -huh. a year ago. So um, I think what's of interest to us now really is thinking about what's happening during lockdown for people with learning difficulties and parents with learning difficulties. Where is that support coming from? Andy is also concerned about how people with learning difficulties are being represented in the current crisis. But they don't mention it when they do the briefing. They don't say anything about people learning difficulties. It's just the elderly all the time. People are not having the opportunity to say what people are learning difficulties are feeling. And Becca is concerned about social isolation. I just want to know how other people are being connected, are staying connected to their friends. Mm -hmm. The current crisis raises big questions for now and the future. How are people with learning difficulties and parents with learning difficulties coping with the current crisis? What community resources are disappearing during this crisis? And are new communities and resources developing during this crisis? We hope to start to explore some of these questions during the next few months. If you would like to hear more about the project and keep in touch with us, please email assetsforparents-project at york.ac.uk and you can follow the project on Twitter at people underscore York. Thanks for watching.